Hello, and a very warm welcome to our Lenti Royal YouTube channel. Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex completed their final royal engagements before making their official exit, but it's rumored that they'll be back soon. Queen Elizabeth may extend an invitation to the Sussexes for a very big event, Trugan the Color 2020, which celebrates the Queen's birthday. Prince Harry and Meghan joined the Queen for their final royal engagement. Prince Harry and Meghan officially leave their royal duties on March 31st, but they return to the UK to carry out a few remaining engagements. One of them, their final appearance, was the Commonwealth Day service attended by Prince William, Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, and the Queen, among other royal family members. There was no interaction witnessed between the Sussexes and the Queen, nor was there much in the way of pleasantries between the couple and Prince William and Kate. It wasn't the warm reunion that we were all hoping for, body language expert Judy James explained to LMT Royal Channel. The tension in Harry's body language especially was palpable. Harry and Meghan looked a lot more genuinely cheerful, and Harry especially, threw a really affectionate smile at Kate, she noted. As they took their seats Harry threw Kate an open-mouthed smile and hello, of what looked like genuine pleasure, and Meghan raised her brows and smiled in an equally friendly ritual. Will Prince Harry and Meghan return to the UK again soon? The Sussexes may have left their royal life in the spotlight for a more normal existence, but experts believe that they will return again to attend royal events, including the Queen's birthday celebration at Trooping the Colour. Commentator Aaron Hill told us that Prince Harry and Meghan might be invited to return to the UK for the big event. The earliest we could see them could possibly be in June, when the Queen extends an invitation for them to return for Trooping the Colour, which is the Queen's official birthday, Hill explained. It's when they do the whole balcony appearance with the royal family. It could be that we see them then, she added. I think at this stage, it's an invitation considering they are not senior working royals anymore, so it would be by invitation. The Sussexes had an emotional time at their final engagements, according to expert. Chris Harry and Meghan's return to finish their engagements was bittersweet, according to Hill. Despite the couple's desire to escape the spotlight, attending their final appearances wasn't all happy. This was a bittersweet trip for both the people of the UK and the royal family, Hill explained. It went extremely well. On the one hand, Harry and Meghan got to visit with the public, and they got to see them again. She added, they were also reminded what they would be missing. This really amazing, star-worthy couple, who really connect with their organization. But they were able to reassure their patronages that they aren't going anywhere in terms of still relay their support. It was a successful tour but definitely a sad one, Hill noted. Another report. As a boy, you love to wear tiny Paris fatigues, but now, after what might be a last appearance in uniform. How Harry's lifelong passion for the armed forces has come to a sudden end. Just over a year ago Prince Harry was at a Royal Marines base deep in the Dartmoor National Park presenting new recruits with their coveted green barrets. It is an annual event of simple ceremony, but deep historical significance. Indeed, if there is one occasion that can be said to truly emphasize the near-sacred link between royalty and the armed forces, it is that unfussy ritual. When the next batch of tough young men complete the grueling commando course at Bickley Barracks in Devon, the one that his uncle Prince Edward famously dropped out of, it is unlikely Harry, Captain General of the Marines, will even know, let alone be on hand to present the fabled barracks. In fact, after wearing his scarlet mess jacket at the Mountbatten Festival of Music in the Royal Albert Hall. He may never be seen in military uniform for formal duties again. He will effectively be joining the ranks of retired service personnel, who can wear their medals but not their uniforms at official engagements. Of all the unintended consequences of Harry's decision to step back from royal life, the loss of his military connections is surely the most heartfelt and poignant. When next we see Harry at the Cenotaph, say, on Remembrance Sunday, 
he will not be a participant with his father and brother laying a wreath of poppies, but rather gazing on the scene from the foreign office balcony as a mere spectator. How tragic that as one of only two front line royals to have seen military action. The other is Prince Andrew. Harry may never again be on parade in full ceremonial wear. Yet for as long as he can remember Harry wanted to be a soldier. From the moment he could stand on two feet, he preferred marching to walking, snapping to attention as the guard changed at Buckingham Palace and crisply saluting at anyone in gold braid. While William daydreamed about being a policeman, so he could protect their mother, Harry yearned for active service and a life in an army uniform. From the age of two he loved nothing more than dashing around in his cut-down Paris fatigues, with the famous red barret pulled down low over his eyes. As an eight-year-old he traveled with Princess Diana to Germany to take the salute from the light dragoons, watching on from the turret of a similar armored vehicle, his camouflaged face a beaming picture of pride. Fast forward two decades and the tall, broad-shouldered figure in sunglasses scrambling to his Apache helicopter for a front-line sortie in the skies over Afghanistan, is unmistakably a grown-up version of that same sandy-haired little boy, proudly showing off his double-time marching. In the coming weeks, as he contemplates the wreckage of his royal life, Harry, a man given to brooding introspection, may well look back on those years with more than just nostalgia. The esprit de corps he found with his brother officers, and the men he led in battle against the Taliban, gave him not just a structure, but a framework for life. Now all that is gone, lost in his and Meghan's grab for an independence free from the conventions and scrutiny, as they see it, of being a member of the royal family. Under the terms of the deal struck with the Queen and Prince Charles, he will give up all his military appointments and must lose the honorary roles he holds with the armed forces. Of all the adjustments he will have to make, the loss of those service ties must surely be the most painful of all. During a speech at the Endeavor Fund Awards for Wounded Veterans, he acknowledged the wrench. Being able to serve Queen and Country is something we all are rightly proud of, and it never leaves us, he said. Once served, always serving. How baffling then that he is turning his back on this brotherhood he loved. Once a hankering for a life under orders was all he craved. This ambition drove him from Eaton's combined cadet force to the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst and a commission with the Blues and Royals. His aptitude for the army was never in doubt from the moment he passed the board for Sandhurst qualification with the highest possible grade. The Queen was there at his passing out parade. Two tours of Afghanistan followed, including one as an Army Air Corps gunnery co-pilot, after he retrained to fly helicopters. He was always happier bedding down in an Army issue sleeping bag than slipping between those monogram palace sheets. But after a time the military represented a paradox for Harry. Instead of helping him find the freedom he sought away from royal life, it began to frustrate him. Restrictions imposed because of who he was meant the top brass were not prepared to allow further frontline postings. With the prospect of a desk job Harry brought down the curtain on his 10-year military career. Nevertheless, he promised himself that the comradeship of bonds forged in war would endure. His support for charities like walking with the wounded and highlighting the mental well-being of our servicemen and women as well as his establishment of the Invictus Games for Disabled Veterans were ample testimony. Succeeding Prince Philip as ceremonial head of the Marines was another significant step. But the Duke of Edinburgh remained in the role for more than 64 years. And Harry. So far he has lasted a trifling 25 months. Please support Growing LNT World Channel by subscribe channel, like and share videos hour. Your support is the motivation for us to produce better videos. Stop. Stop.